So now we're going to show the injections for the cervical spine using prolotherapy and PRP. What we're going to do here is we're going to feel the tip of the spinous process and we're going to feel the transverse process and we're going to basically bisect the line. Again, we entered the skin quickly. This way it doesn't hurt the patient and we're going to inject around the facet capsule and then walk our needle up to the spinous process and walk it along the transverse process. Again, it's not one injection into one area, so we, have, we can really capitalize and get a lot of injections into a single area and treat all of the ligamentous attachments. And this helps the patient the most rather than just putting one injection around the facet. I can feel where I'm going with the tip of the needle. It's an extremely safe procedure in skilled hands and with a very, very low complication rate. I do happen to perform approximately 2,500 PRP procedures every year since 1999. So experience really counts in being able to provide a comfortable procedure for the patient and also a very accurate procedure that's going to help the patient. This patient has already had one procedure of PRP into her neck and is already starting to feel benefit from her chronic pain. These attachments down here are very important, not just for the cervical spine, but also to help with the stability of the scapula, which we're going to address as well. And typically we're injecting approximately one cc per area. Sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. Interestingly enough, as the tissue gets stronger, we will be able to inject less into that tissue as it rebuilds and regenerates over time. As you can see, there's minimal bleeding, minimal swelling, generally no bruising. And again, we can also do this very safely if you know your anatomy without using fluoroscopy or ultrasound guidance. This is done by an understanding of anatomy of the patient and done by my palpation. And again, you need to be able to feel where you are with the needle. So now we're going to address the areas of scapular stability in order to try to keep the scapula in its place to keep the pressure off of the cervical spine that can emanate from the scapula pulling on the neck. The scapula most people know as the wing bone and holds the shoulder in place as well. And here we're going to treat all along the border of the scapula and try to rebuild these muscular and tendinous insertions. And this here is in the back of the shoulder. And again, if you know your anatomy, you can often inject very safely. But unfortunately, in inexperienced hands, any procedure can be dangerous. Injecting into the cervical spine, one must be very careful not to inject into the spinal column or onto a spinal nerve. This could be devastating for the patient and lead to an emergency. Furthermore, injecting around this region could be a problem if someone would inject too close into the lung and they could cause a uh, pneumothorax. This is why it's very important to see a physician who's extremely skilled and performs lots of procedures on patients. And here we have injection into the trap and the levator scapulae to help keep this scapula in place.
That concludes the treatment for the cervical spine and the scapula and the scapulothoracic dysfunction. Mm -hmm.